for me and my shoulder gremlin. Wait, that was my WhatsApp voicemail message. Hello for close friends. You know, close friends do a lot of things for each other. You lend each other books, you buy each other lunch, and you judge each other's terrible choices. So come with me and I will tell you about one of mine. Hi guys, it's Leanne and it is officially the 2nd of January. We have made it. It is 2021 and that means it is time for the very first TBR of the year. This TBR, however, is an extra special one because it is the first TBR of my year of readathons. If you have not watched my 2021 goals video, you will have no idea what I'm talking about right now. So let me recap. I was apparently too loud for the gargoyle. In 2021, I am going to be keeping my Stack It TBR game, but I am going to be supplementing it with a year of one month long readathons that I set all on my own. I absolutely love taking part in readathons, but I get way too stressed trying to tick off all of the bingo boards and the individual prompts and the things that add up to get you the thing that gets you into the thing to do the other thing. And I just, I stop reading. I spend all my time making the lists and none of my time getting through the lists. And so this year I decided that I was going to set myself my own little challenges that you guys could join in with. You can take the prompts, you can interpret them any way you like and you can fill in the boards that I'm going to make and you can do that any month. So for example you can take January's readathon and do it in January or you can take January's readathon and do it in, I don't know, September when you can't find a readathon that you like. Every readathon is going to have some nice social media stuff that you can post everywhere to tell people what you're doing and it will all be linked in the description below. Also for those of you who would like to participate with me in the same month that I'm doing the readathon I'm going to try and do my TBRs at the end of the month in future and that way you've got the prompts and you can plan ahead if that's your thing. If you just like to fly by the seat of your pants like me then this video will work for you. Sorry it's a tiny bit late but 2020 was ending and I had to celebrate. Before we jump in and generate January's readathon prompts, I thought I would also briefly recap my Stack It TBR game for those of you who are new, because there's quite a few of you, hello, welcome, and for those of you who may have forgotten the rules, because it's a brand new year and there was a lot more things to worry about last year, so let's, let's just start fresh. Every month I go to my bookshelves and I make a stack of physical books. <laughs> like so. Well actually more like so because I'm only trying to do five books on my physical stack this year and then I'm going to try and let myself mood read. I have discovered that I need a nice easy medium between the two. Whatever order this stack comes off my bookshelves in is the order that I have to read them in from top to bottom. If I get halfway through the stack and I decide that I really don't want to read that book, chances are that I'm probably never going to read it, especially if it wasn't acquired in 2020, the year of pandemic book buying misery. The only extra rule that you guys begged me to add was that if the reason you're really not getting through your stack is because you've decided you really want to read the one right at the bottom and that's just stopping you from having motivation, we can flip the stack once, but only once. Got it? Good! Goddamn sexy Highlander romance, this is your fault, Jean. Jean got me this one for my Christmas and it's been in this stack on my floor ever since and I kept wondering why the stack kept falling over and <laughs> this is why. Can't trust sexy Highlander men. So with all of that said, and there was rather a lot of it, let's get on with this month's torture. I mean challenge. The prompts for January's readathon are going to be colours. It is going to be a colour palette challenge. So I am going to use an app called Coolers. This is completely non-spawn. I just absolutely love this app. I am an illustrator. I use it for my job. Sometimes I'll have a couple of colours in mind for a piece and I'll put them into the app and then you can auto-generate complementary colours or opposite colours. We are going to randomly generate a colour for each one of these little books, for each of the five books from my stack it for this month. I'm going to pick solely physical books because I can actually, you know, see them and see if they jive with the colours. I am afraid. Let's go. Oh, okay. That is a, that, that is, that is a very, 
very random color choice. We're rolling with it. I like it and we're rolling with it. So first up, we have a really kind of perfect cherry red. It's got some pink undertones. It's not too harsh, unlike my lipstick. Red like the blood of my enemies. And next up we've got a navy, but it's a very warm navy. Like I wouldn't put it in the blue family. I'd put it closer to the purples. Then we have got a really sunshiny yellow. This is one of my favorite colors of yellow actually. Do you know what? I wonder if this color palette was looking at me. Can it see me? Then we've got a very sort of, I would call this like a blushy beige. It's definitely on the warmer side. Again, all of these colors seem to be on the warmer side and then the last one that we've got here is a real random one it's a very like olivey brown like a, a ground color now the whole idea of a color palette challenge is that you can interpret it any way that you like you can take it very literally and you can find a book with navy on the cover or you can maybe find a book with the colors as words in the title like red dust road for example or you can look at them and think of what kind of mood that particular color evokes or maybe even like what kind of genre that that color evokes what mood does the book have have. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick five books now and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna explain my choices. Oh damn, that also means that you can see the pile of unhauled books on my floor. I said that 2021 was a hard book buying year. I know, it's so hard. Okay, I am back with my choices. That was harder than I thought it was going to be. I was going with like colours on the cover, but things that reminded me of books. I can't decide whether to do the stack in the order that the colours came out or to do the stack in the order that I picked them. Okay, I'm gonna do them in the order that I picked them, the order that they came to me. So the very first colour that came to mind immediately for this sort of like ochre yellow, this like beautiful sunshiny yellow, was this book. This is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto. And to be fair, pretty much all of the colours are represented on this cover somewhere. That was almost the perfect challenge. So maybe you want to interpret it that way. Maybe you want to pick a book that has all of these colours somewhere on the cover and just read one book. So Girl, Women, Other, as I understand it, is a portrait of Britain all the way from I think the late 1800s to the present day told through the eyes of the black women who helped to make it. I also am told that the representation in this book is amazing, that these women are from all different backgrounds, all different social statuses and have all different sexualities and I am very very happy with that. The thing that I think I'm most excited about though is that every chapter in this book is told from a different woman's point of view so there are quite a lot of point of views and in that way it's kind of like you're getting a short story collection which I'm not a big fan of because I hate starting books that's my worst thing starting books is really difficult for me but once I'm in it I don't want to leave it or to put it down so it's kind of like I'm getting the feeling of a short story collection without the anxiety of having to repeatedly start a new story because these all like link together into one large narrative at the end but the other thing I noticed when I was flipping through this one is it's told in quite an experimental style there's not a lot of punctuation in it at all it's quite stream of consciousness and I'm uh, yeah, very very excited for this one. Less excited that it has a tiny kitten tooth mark on the corner but mm, kittens <laughs> they get everywhere. I actually had a couple of picks for the kind of navy colour that we have here. There are actually quite a few books on my sci-fi fantasy shelf which weirdly had exactly this kind of navy blue on it but I went for the one in the end that I think I am most excited about and it is Cinderella is dead. I said that with quite a lot of relish but I don't really want her to be dead. I have a question mark about this one because I'm not sure whether it's set in like a weird alternative dystopian future or whether it is a completely alternate fantasy world. I don't know but either way in this world the Cinderella myth is true. It happened 200 years ago and now every child, every female child in this kingdom 
is told about the Cinderella myth up until the age that they are sent to the choosing which is a ball where they are picked by eligible men and if they are not picked they are never heard from again. But our main character Sophia does not want to be chosen at the ball despite the fact that she doesn't really know the fate of what happens to the girls who aren't chosen because she has already chosen somebody for herself. And from what I've heard, this is very, very queer and I'm very, very here for it. This was one of the ones that could have been killed by the hype train for me because last year it just absolutely blew up. So many people were reading it. But so many of the people that I directly always take my recommendations from have read this and have absolutely loved it. So I feel quite safe that it's not just hype and that it is actually probably quite amazing. Now the next one up, I'm not gonna lie, it was quite close to the top of my haul stacks on the floor and it was on my mind. But it's not entirely a cheat because the sort of like weird blushy beige colour is definitely all over the cover of this one and it just, I don't know, it seemed perfect. This is Here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. This is her first adult book. I have previously read Moonrise by her which is a contemporary YA which absolutely blew my socks off and broke my heart and I've since purchased another one of hers although I can't really remember the title of it at the moment. I'll put it here if I remember. And when I discovered that she had an adult novel out I needed it and I needed it immediately and then I got it and then I read the premise and now I'm like <gasps> this is about Anna. She has been having an affair with Connor for many many years. They have a very well established relationship and they are both content that they are entirely in love. And then Connor is killed. The very worst happens. He is taken away from her but nobody in Connor's life knows that she exists, especially not Connor's wife. And so in the wake of this tragedy, Anna is trying to put her life back together and she realises that the only person who really misses Connor as much as she misses Connor is Connor's wife and so she reaches out. I... I am expecting to not feel okay at the end of this one. Next up I went with this sort of olivey brown colour. Now I'm not gonna lie, the first thing that I thought of when I saw that colour was fantasy and was specifically the ink on fantasy maps. But on my way to the fantasy section, a book that was also on my haul pile on the floor caught my eye and this exact colour is represented on the cover. This is This Lovely City by Louise Hare and this is a historical fiction about the Windrush generation. So Laurie came over to Britain during the Windrush generation. He is a musician and he has settled down for an entirely new life as it was promised to him in Britain. He is a postman by day and by night he plays in jazz clubs and then one day he makes a horrible discovery that turns the entire community around him against each other and fingers are pointed at everybody. And then he realises that maybe Britain is not exactly as safe as he was told it would be. This is one of those books that came out in 2020 and I genuinely think that if it had come out in any other year everybody would be reading it and it would be on everybody's TBRs but it's kind of been buried under that flood of books that were like rushed out at the end of the year. As I do with all of the books that come into my house I have read the first couple of pages of this and I love the tone of it. I have kind of walked away somewhat from literary fiction in the last couple of years. We're broken up, let's be honest. And my relationship with historical fiction is kind of like in the it's complicated bracket and also if I'm going to be perfectly honest I don't really like narratives that are predominantly about music so I don't know what confluence of events brought this book to me and what made me so invested in it before I have even properly started to read it but I'm I'm very emotionally invested in this already so I'm, I'm scared but I'm reading it and also like just in case you were wondering like th this is brown it's not black it's brown it's the same colour honest. And then finally for the like cherry red colour a book immediately popped into my brain and I tried to avoid it. I tried to go and spend more time on my thriller shelves because there's a lot of red spined books on my thriller shelves but I just kept coming back to this one and I will admit it is not the same colour of cherry red 
at all but it made me think of this book this color made me think of this book and so that's how I'm interpreting the prompt I'm just gonna make my brain happy the book that I have picked is this one this is things we didn't talk about when I was a girl by Jeannie Vanesco and it is a memoir slash kind of a social commentary on rape so when Jeannie Vanesco was a young girl she was raped by her best male friend to her completely out of the blue and she didn't talk about it they didn't talk about it they both went on with their lives and then years and years later in the wake of the me too movement Jeannie was left feeling like she had missed her opportunity to talk about this out loud to work through these feelings and so she did something that she didn't expect herself to ever do and she reached out to her childhood friend to the boy who had raped her and she asked to interview him about it and this book is entirely made up of that interview and Jeannie Vanesco's commentary on how she feels about it and I am really looking forward to it. I have quite a few books right now on my shelves about rape and the aftermath of rape and the kind of legacy that it leaves behind and so I, I think this one was kind of at the top of my list of those books and that's why when I saw this color I was like I'm having it. <laughs> so here is my stack this is the order that I plan to read them in from top to bottom and here is my completed board that I will be moving through. I actually really like the way that this one turned out it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. So that takes care of January's mini readathon and the year of readathons but I do have a couple of other books on my TBR for this month. The first of those is a reread so I forgot to mention in my goals for 2020 video that one of the goals that I have picked is to reread 12 books so reread one book a month because I sucked at it last year. I really really didn't reread as many books as I would usually and when I started rereading one of my favourite series I immediately got myself back out of my reading slump. So at the end of 2020 I was looking for a comfort read to kind of like ease my way into 2021. I didn't want to do that thing where I was like I'll finish everything and then I'll go into 2021 with nothing because then I would have just sat there paralysed and not knowing what to pick. So I ended up picking up The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I absolutely adore this book. It is one of my favourite books in the world ever and I am listening to an audiobook this time around and it's just giving me all of the warm fuzzy feels. So that's my reread for the month. And speaking of books that I am carrying over from 2020, I am also one third of the way through right now Starfell, Willow, Moss and the Lost Day, which is a fantasy middle grade series about Willow Moss whose magical power and a, a very a long series of magical powers handed down through her family that nobody wants nobody wants is the ability to find things she can find lost objects which of course really doesn't do that much for her and only kind of pays a pittance from people in the village who've like I don't know misplaced their watch and then one day the most powerful witch in the valley walks into her house and says that she needs her help because Tuesday has gone missing and without finding it the fabric of the world is going to tear itself apart. This also features an incredibly grumpy magical ginger cat that lives on a carpet bag and if that isn't enough to make you want to read it I don't know what is. And then finally I'm trying to make a dent in my ebooks this year because my ebooks have been traditionally a place where you know my library has gone to die and never be heard from again. Bookbub is evil and we no longer subscribe that's all I'm gonna say about that. The book that I've picked off of my Kindle for this month is The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily X. R. Pan. This one is a book that was really, really highly touted to me last year. Like, a lot of people had it on their TBRs, a lot of people were like, you will like this. And then finally I asked Kirsty for a list of books that she thought that I would like just before the end of the year, before I wasn't allowed to buy anything because, you know, this year six months book buying ban. <laughs> Day two, I'm already sad. However, 
<laughs> this was one of the books that was on Kirstie's list and so I ended up picking it up. This one is about Lee Chen who again seems to have a bit of a perfect life. She has a best friend who she has a bit of a crush on. She has a fairly like calm life. She is an artist and she is exploring her gifts and then one day seemingly out of the blue her mother commits suicide and leaves her a note. That note says only I want you to remember and Lee Chen has absolutely no way to interpret that message and through the course of this book she ends up travelling back to Taiwan which is where her mother originally came from to live with her grandparents and try to investigate the real truth of her mother's life and I guess find out her truth in the process. I am also very excited. Sometimes the hype train will hit and I'll be like nah and other times the hype train will hit and I'll be like I'm kind of interested in that but I'm a little bit scared. So I was scared about this one now I'm just going to freaking read the thing. So that's it that is my TBR for this month. This is our filled in readathon board for this month. We'll see how we get on with our readathon stack it and here are all of the other books that I am planning on picking up. It's gonna be a good month. I am full of positivity for my reading in 2021 that 100 books is within my grasp and you can do it too and you can use these prompts to do it again if you want to download the sheet to fill in for yourself for Instagram or anywhere else it will be down below in the description the cat has now decided that he's having his lunch so I am going to leave or all you're gonna hear is crunching noises if you like this video then please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you liked it that much then maybe subscribe for more of my face and for future monthly readathon and I will see you all soon Goodbye. So this is the point where I have to confess to you that I don't have anywhere to put these books right now because uh, <laughs> I'm ripping these shelves apart this month for my disdain and your pleasure and also so that you know all my books fit. And uh, so these I guess are just gonna stay right here in the way. Stack it problems.